So functions are going to be a great tool for allowing us to reuse our code. And if you have multiple statements that you want to reuse throughout your program, well, one way you can do it is to just write those multiple statements many times and repeat that. Another more efficient way is to create a function, basically a block of code, and then you can, you can just reuse that. You can call it by stating the function's name, and it just repeats it. So here I've created two variables on line one and line two, um, and then I'm going to add that together and return the value. So to create a function, you use the function keyword. You have to give your function a name, or actually you, you don't have to, technically speaking. But the easiest way at first here will be to give it a name, and then we can call the function at any time by just referencing that name, and then it will execute the code, whatever statements you have between the opening and closing curly brace. Now notice here we have our parentheses. So this is similar to the if condition. You, you probably remember how you have the if, you have parentheses, and then you have opening and closing curly bracket. And so a lot of the, um, a lot of the statements within JavaScript will have very similar syntax here. So here um, we can go ahead and just go on inside our function. I'm just going to add my number one plus my number two. And I'll set this equal to another variable. I'll uh, just say new number equals my number one plus my number two. And we'll just do an alert. And we should get the number 15 here when we run this. Um, so first of all, it's saved in memory. Uh, when I create that function on line four. And in order to execute it, I'll have to actually run that function name. So to run the function name, I'll call the function total value. Okay. So I just state that name on line four. You want to have an opening and closing parenthesis there um, uh, when you call the function. And I'll explain what that's for in just a minute. So when I execute this, when I run the code, then it gives me an alert of 15. Now note that I'm calling the function before I've created it. And that's, uh, that's legal within JavaScript to do that. It will still um, execute the code because the way that it's working here is that we create the function between line six and line 10. It stores it in memory, and then it goes through and it goes through the sequences of our JavaScript statements. Technically though, um, a better way to code it is to create our function first and then call it afterwards. Okay. Um, we can also run this function and uh, without actually having the variables on line one and two. Instead, another option is we can send the data uh, by directly typing it into our, our function call as an argument. So here we are in total value. This is in line six. And I'll go ahead and just add two numbers. I'll say um, 10 and 24. Okay. So now when I run this function, it will send the numbers 10 and the numbers 24 up to this function total value, and it will process it. Now there's nothing here to accept that data. So I need to put the, the um, variables in here. You see. Before I created the variables on line in one and two, in my previous example I just had up a second ago. But now in this case, um, I'm not going to have the variables created outside of the function. I'm just going to go ahead and place them in here, my number, and then also comma my number two. And now, oh, actually I've put a one here, pardon me. Now it will work with that and accept that data on line two or excuse me, in, in line one in the argument, and then it will process it on line two. And then we should still get it to work. So let me just test that. Okay, we have 34, so it's behaving. Now, as, as we'll find out, um, a good way to do this is to actually create the variables outside of it. So we have these in memory beforehand, but we don't have to load data into them at this time. So it's just sitting there empty. 
It's actually undefined on line one and two, but that doesn't hurt anything. It's just created a name. It's, it's created a space for it in in uh, in memory. And then on line nine, when we call the function, we send data to it, and then it is accepted in there. So that won't change the immediate result that you'll see, but it does help with error checking if we can create those variables ahead of time on line one and two. Uh, the last thing I'll do here is to go ahead and return this value. So you could actually do this on one line, but I'll go ahead and do this on a separate line here. So I could return new number equals my number uh, one plus my number two. But um, I'll go ahead and return new number. And then I'll go ahead and do an alert on new number. It seems like a little extra code here, but just to make it more clear, I'll go ahead and make it on, on multiple statements. So here what we're doing is we are um, adding the number, we're placing it in this variable called new number, but on line six, we're returning that value. So it returns the value of the variable, um, and actually I need to have a semicolon there. It returns the value of that variable, um, and then we can process it in the rest of our, jo of our JavaScript statements. So for example, on line 10, as you'll see, that should work. Okay, so now I can save that and I hit refresh and it's still gonna be 34 in this case. Uh, just to make sure that it's working and I'm not just running the same thing twice, I'll change this to one. So now it should be 25. And I look at my result and it has 25 as my alert. Okay, thank you.